I want to start off by asking all of you a simple question. How many of you wish that your phone, laptop, or other device of choice had a longer lasting battery? Raise those hands high. Okay, wow. Oh, this guy has two hands up. <laughs> I love it. Um, but I think our reaction to that is in a lot of ways representative of our underlying philosophy when it comes to our devices. Whether it's in consumer electronics, appliances, or even now more recently, our fancy new electric vehicles, we want our batteries to last as long as possible. And then finally, when we're done with them, we tend to just throw them out. So with that backdrop, you can probably imagine just how surprised I was upon coming across the field of transient or biodegradable electronics. Because of the emphasis that we traditionally place on durable, long-lasting devices, I had never even stopped to consider the merits of the opposite, devices that degrade intentionally over time. But as I thought some more, I started to realize just how useful they could be. Let's take a look at a couple of examples. Consider a situation like an oil spill, where sensing can be incredibly important. Well, we can't just drop thousands of normal sensors into the ocean because, for one, it would be super hard to reclaim all of them. And if we left them behind, that could actually further pollute the environment counterintuitively because some of those sensors might actually contain toxic elements. That's where transient electronics come in, enabling effective, cheap, and above all, benign systems. That same logic applies to agricultural and environmental sensing and biodegradable consumer electronics, like your laptops and phones, could help minimize the millions of tons of electronic waste that have increasingly been linked with environmental and health problems. But possibly the most enticing application of all, at least in my mind, lies in the field of medicine. There are lots of problems that arise in the gastrointestinal tract of the human body, for instance. So imagine a small capsule, no larger than a prescription pill that you might take. And you could swallow this capsule, and as it traveled through your body, it would dynamically transmit information. This could be on temperature, acidity, or any other variable you could imagine. And then slowly, over the course of the next several hours, it would dissolve harmlessly away. Now that type of real-time monitoring could provide invaluable information, not just to you, but to your doctor, to people trying to better understand diseases, and all of this with absolutely no risk to you, the patient. What's more, you could even embed a controlled release system of medication into this small capsule. So now you're not just using it for monitoring, but for something as powerful as targeted drug delivery. So needless to say, after hearing about all these possibilities, I was super excited. I had a background in research and material science, and so I felt that this was right up my alley. And the logical first step was figuring out what exactly had been done in the field so far. And in the summer of 2015, when I first began asking these questions, I was pretty surprised to find that the answer was really not that much. I saw that transient electronics was still an emerging and growing area, but there was a lot of room still left uncovered. And so the natural progression was figuring out where I fit in within this broad scope. And I realized that at the heart of any system is the battery, which serves as an onboard power source. So my thinking was that if I could really focus on and improve upon this essential component, I would be able to make the biggest difference. I spent the next several months doing background research, reading journal articles, and eventually, I came up with my own design for a biodegradable battery. And the result was this. A device comprised of magnesium and iron, both of which are fully biodegradable and biocompatible metals that can be used safely within the context of either the body or the environment. The total volume on this device was on the order of just cubic millimeters, so extremely small. And yet it was capable of providing power for over 30 hours and dissolved entirely in the span of just a few days, as you can see in these images. What was also really great 
is that the performance of the battery matched up and actually exceeded those of lots of studies that had been reported earlier. And in addition to that better performance was also more cost effective while matching up perfectly with the requirements for low power electronic systems, demonstrating immediate applicability in small, short lasting sensors, which is a really great result. And the last part of my work involved developing an efficient model that could closely track with real world data and essentially predict battery performance over time. And what that meant was that rather than having to run experimental tests manually for tens or even hundreds of hours, you can now simply specify a handful of parameters and then immediately gauge how the battery would perform in specific applications, which is a major saver of time and resources. So that was really the essence of my work, developing and modeling a biodegradable battery. And yet, for all the great results, I think the aspect of my work that I enjoyed most thoroughly was just the sheer experimentation. I think it's only once you really get going on a project that you start to realize just how many options there are of things that you can do, some of which will inevitably lead to new knowledge and in some rare cases, even breakthroughs. In fact, I noticed throughout my journey that it was the small, not as significant changes that were able to make the biggest impact. I noticed pretty early on in my testing process, for example, that magnesium, which was one of my main materials, was actually degrading much too quickly to have practical value. And so here I was with all my aspirations, looking at a battery that wasn't actually functioning, that wasn't actually producing enough power. And so of course, I thought long and hard about how I could overcome this issue, including lots of really complex and highly detailed solutions. When eventually I thought, why don't I just try using an alloy? My thinking was that just like steel is very different from pure iron in its actual properties, that a magnesium alloy might in fact yield superior performance as compared to the pure magnesium. And what was really remarkable is that in terms of composition, the two materials were practically identical. The alloy just added in 3% aluminum and 1% zinc. And yet when I made this small change, device performance improved by over six times, which ended up being one of my main findings. And so I think the key lesson there that some of our best breakthroughs can come from unexpected places is not just true in my research, but also holds outside the confines of a research lab. No matter what the field, we need to learn to embrace the unconventional and to take a step back every once in a while and look at the broader picture. If I hadn't considered using the alloy, which was a much simpler material solution than the other options I was looking at, I would have missed out on one of my key discoveries. If we don't use models as simplifying abstractions, the process of refining and improving our devices becomes exponentially more difficult. And at an even higher level, if we refuse to shift the fundamental paradigm in which we view our electronic devices in order to accommodate a more straightforward technology, biodegradable electronics, we risk missing out on a series of exciting applications that could truly transform our lives for the better. One of my favorite quotes is from the great Leonardo da Vinci, who once said, simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. And I think what that quote tells us so directly is that it's not all about complexity and fanciness, despite what some people believe. What we really need most are elegant and open-minded solutions. Imagine a world in which you could toss a phone in a landfill without having to worry about pollution. Imagine a world in which you could glean valuable insight about your body or the environment with absolutely no risk of harm. 10 minutes ago, these might have all sounded like far-fetched, futuristic possibilities. But I hope what my talk has shown is that we're really not that distant after all. There's so much we can achieve in transient electronics and beyond by looking at problems from entirely different angles and then using straightforward and intuitive approaches 
to come up with effective answers. We have all this untapped potential. Imagine what we could do if we finally realized it. Thanks. <laughs>